Hello, and welcome to the University of East London Online. This is the first of a series of discussions by Professor Rachel Tryon. Hello, my name is Professor Rachel Tribe. I work in the School of Psychology at the University of East London. I'm going to talk to you for about eight to ten minutes about my journey into psychology and some of my areas of research. I would say for me it's been a fascinating journey. It's taken me geographically to all sorts of different countries and offered me many exciting opportunities. I would recommend it to anyone as, as a path to follow. I've been lucky enough, I've worked in the NHS, in the private sector, with charities. Um, I've also um, worked uh, at, uh, in collaboration with the Football Association. I've worked as a psychologist at Broadmoor Hospital. I've worked in war zones. I've worked in refugee camps. I've also been invited to the House of Lords and also to um, in, uh, uh, participate in policy discussions. Uh, for the British Psychological Society. So I'm going to briefly talk about four areas of my scholarly interest and research within psychology. These are my, one, migration, mental health and well-being, two, working across language and culture in mental health, three, community engagement and psychology, and four, professional research and ethical practice all very important within psychology. Firstly, migration, mental health and well-being. Increasing numbers of people are moving across national borders for a variety of reasons, some voluntarily and some forced. Mental health and psychology services around the world need to be accessible, inclusive and appropriate if they're going to benefit as many people as possible. At UEL, with some colleagues, mainly from the School of Psychology, but not exclusively, and a number of students, we set up an online resource for refugees, asylum seekers, health and social care professionals that is used by people from all over the world. Resources on refugee and asylum seekers. Mental health resources in English, which contains resources from all over the world. We then move on to translated mental health resources, refugee mental health wellbeing guides and downloads. We've then got therapeutic approaches, audio and video resources, relaxation techniques and presentation and teachings. And although you might think this is just for refugees and asylum seekers or people working with them, uh, my PhD student recently told me he regularly, almost daily, goes onto the relaxation techniques uh, to help him reduce his level of stress. Moving on, we look at audio, video and resources because there might be some things there that are useful to you. For example, here, particularly in this time of COVID, We've got anxiety control training, low confidence and assertiveness, sleep problems, unhelpful thinking, podcasts, mindfulness, mental health interventions, and a range of other things. Just going to briefly open one of these resources so you can have a look if at the kind of things that are here. You all have severe mood swings usually starts between the ages of 15 to 19. That gives you an idea, we won't go into that now. When depressed. So hopefully you'll find this resource useful. It contains a wealth of information about adults and children, mental health and well-being. Before moving on. So that's the link with the red arrow if you want to look at that resource. And with a colleague in the school, Namisha Patel, we also wrote guidelines for the British Psych Psychological Society on working with refugees and asylum seekers. And these also have been widely used and are available online. Secondly, we're going to talk about working across language and culture in psychology and with mental health and wellbeing. Very important area. We've all seen examples of when translations have been inaccurate 
For example, this should say shoe wearing prohibited rather than foot wearing prohibited. An interpreter is a very important person in mental health work. If somebody doesn't speak the language or, or possibly share a cultural background with a psychologist. Just thinking about working as interpreter, just think for a moment, how easy on a scale of one to 10 do you think it is to work as an interpreter? Okay, now you've got your number, I'm just going to ask you how you might interpret the following. I want to pick your brains. Don't teach your grandmother to suck eggs. And I was going to tell you a story, but we're running out of time, so I'm going to move on. We also wrote guidelines for psychologists, myself and a colleague who used to work at the University of East London, on working with interpreters and bicultural workers. And again, these are available online. We also developed a resource, a DVD I made uh, with UEL and the Department of Health on working with interpreters, which is now available on YouTube at the following link. Thirdly, I'm going to talk a little bit about community engagement and psychology. Community engagement is seen as very important to the whole of UEL and we do a range of projects within the School of Psychology. For example, one of the things I was involved with was setting up a football team um, when I was working as a psychologist in clinical work. This included a whole range of using psychological concepts. For example, bringing a community of people together, developing teamwork, Cartesian split, thinking about body-mind links, well-being and resilience. And we were asked to um, talk about this to the various um, uh, international bodies. Moving on, this is another project, academics and students with dual cultural or linguistic heritage across the university, where we developed a partnership with a local charity, here the Refugee Council and we undertook a number of activities and um, shared facilities, we used placements and had a range of shared training. We also, uh, with a colleague, two colleagues, have written guidelines for psychologists on working with community organisations. And finally, I'm going to talk about ethical research and professional practice which are vital for psychologists to consider. To blog or not to blog, that is the question. The psychology has a range of ethical issues that we need to consider if we're going to be effective and ethical. So finally, this is the third edition of the Handbook of Professional Ethical and Research Practice for psychologists, counsellors or psychotherapists Many chapters were written by staff in the School of Psychology at the University of East London. Thank you very much for listening. I hope it's given you a little bit of insight in some of the, of a lot, some of the work that's going on in the School of Psychology. Thank you for listening and do get back to me if you've got any queries or questions or would like to be in touch for listening. I hope it gave you a little bit of insight into the many thing, exciting things that are going on in the School of Psychology at UEL. Should you wish to contact me, there's my email and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening.